everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, let me just adjust my sound here. Um, thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Jennifer Barba, and it is my pleasure to be joined by uh, Giada Matern from the Business Analytics Program Office, as well as a number of recent graduates from the Business Analytics Program at MIT. You know, our goal today is to share some insight into um, a quick overview of the program. We'll touch on sort of an outline of the admissions process, and then dive right into um, a Q&A session with our alumni. Um, that which Giada will help to moderate. Um, and then in terms of myself, again, my name is Jen Barba. I'm a part of the admissions team. And so, you know, it's important to start with just kind of a quick big picture overview of what the business analytics program looks like. So this year, um, we brought an additional 60 students to join us for the business analytics or the MBAN program. Um, you know, they represented a number of different diverse attributes from an average work experience of about 16 months. There's 23 different countries represented when you look at the the country of origin, average age is about 23. Academically, they were very strong. They have um, a variety of different undergraduate backgrounds represented, but you know the majority of students are coming from a more technical or STEM focused role. Um, about 70% of the students are um, from outside of the United States. And you can see their test ranges and GPAs um, are um, you know, setting them up for success in an MIT classroom. Um, and then, you know, I think it's um, a good overview. This is a 12 month program. It begins in mid August with an orientation and then it runs through the end of the following August. So what's truly unique about this program is the opportunity for a 10 week capstone project that wraps up in the summer after your fall and your spring semesters. The capstone program um, is essentially an internship with a partner company that the business analytics program um, works with and then in a team of two students you work um, you know through what the capstone project offers um, with the advice and oversight of PhD and faculty members through the spring semester and then you work there on site for the last 10 weeks um, so it's a, a full 12 month program um, that is geared towards students who are sort of early in their career but really giving you um, both you know academic learnings and preparation as well as experiential and tangible professional skills at the same time and then here's a sampling of those capstone partner companies. You know, the different companies, they may vary from year to year. And, um, but this is sort of an example of a snapshot of some of the organizations that we've partnered with in the past and, um, and expect to partner with many of them again in the future. And so um, the last thing just to, to touch on is um, the career support that we offer. So students who come into the business analytics program will work very closely with a dedicated career advisor. This individual will provide not only customized coaching and support through you know, a recruiting process, but really you know, a foundational set of tools that um, you know, you'll be taught in the classroom with a different, um, different components of what we call kind of career core or um, professional skill building that happens um, both in January and throughout the spring semester, helping to prepare you um, for, you know, a path that, you know, makes sense for you. And that could be working in an analytics role in a tech firm. It could be working in strategy consulting. It could be working um, in a more entrepreneurial or retail focused organization. There's many different paths that we've seen students go into, but, you know, it is important to note that um, students graduating from the business analytics program are very well prepared and quite successful in their job searches. Um, and then the last thing I'd, I'd like to touch on is the application overview. So, you know, this um, webinar is really designed to help you um, gain, you know, one on one access to our alums and, and asking the questions uh, about their personal experiences, both at Sloan and beyond. But um, we know we know that there is an application program a process approaching the deadline is January 7th. This is just kind of an overview of the components of the application. I'll just note that um, this year we have made the decision across all all graduate programs uh, at MIT, in fact, to allow for students to apply without a test. 
just because of the um, you know, unique uh, challenges that uh, COVID has presented in terms of test accessibility around the world, we will allow for students to apply without an exam um, just for this year and you will not be held um, in any kind of, you will not be looked at in any negative way. Um, you know, we will look very closely at the other components of your application in terms of letters of recommendation, um, academic uh, preparation, both through degree granting um, courses that you've taken, as well as any non-degree work that you've done, any online courses, especially, you know, we see a lot of students applying with, um, you know, non-degree coursework in preparation for learning different uh, programming languages. Um, and then in terms of the process, everyone who applies um, has to have their application complete and in by January 7th. We take a few weeks to review all of the submitted applications. Um, and then those initial reviews determine who gets invited to interview. So an interview is a required component of the application process and interviews this year will be conducted over Zoom. So you'll meet face to face with one of us um, in a virtual format and then and we'll dig into a little bit more about your background, your motivations for pursuing the degree. And then we'll ask um, a little bit of, you know, a technical question here or there um, to kind of learn a little bit more about the way you dissect problems and then put together solutions. Um, and then everybody receives the decision from us in early March. Um, and we'll go from there. The, the program begins in August. So, you know, without too much Further, I'd like to turn it over to Giada, who's going to help moderate um, our alumni alumni panel. Hello, everyone. Um, nice to meet you. My name is Giada Tridello Mattern, and I'm the assistant director for the Master of Business Analytics. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you um, today, and uh, I'm even more happy that with me. I I have four of our alumni graduate this past August. Uh, thank you so much for your time to Andras, Alison, Girish, and Susanna. We really appreciate you making time today to be here and answer all the questions that prospective students have. Um, you can see in this slide um, a little bit um, what they are doing right now, our um, alumni. And uh, um, I will start with a very simple question for them. Um, could you please introduce yourself, telling us about your background, um, what is your undergraduate, and why did you choose to apply for the business analytics program? I can, maybe Andras can start and then we can go. Sounds good. Uh, so good morning, everyone. I'm originally from Hungary, but I did my undergraduate in, at the University of Arizona in physics and management information systems. So that was a bit of a mix of both technical and, and the business side. And then really I got interested in sort of the research or the MIS field more so that's what I wanted to pursue after my undergraduate. Uh, I had a chance to work um, in medical research during my undergraduate, um, more from the technical side, from the data science side. And that was something that I, I, think, I thought I wanted to go uh, do, do going forward. And that's why really I wanted to apply to this program um, to really sort of enhance my technical skills as well as build upon the business knowledge that I have. Thank you, Andras. Maybe um, Girish, do you want to go next? Sure, Jeda. Thank you for having me and the others today. I'm sure everybody is really happy. Um, so just a quick introduction. Uh, I'm from India originally. Uh, I have a chemical engineering background. Uh, the reason I applied to the business analytics program is actually threefold. Uh, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, but the first reason is that I was looking for a highly technical program, which was short and uh, which was also really applied uh, in the sense that I could work on projects uh, with actual companies and also have actual industrial experience uh, heading into employment right after. So that was the primary reason. The second reason was that uh, it's more personal. So I had a senior in my institute uh, and he was like a gold medal winner. Uh, it's a very competitive uh, place, trust me, in India. And uh, he did really well. He was like the first among 800 plus students. And uh, he applied to this program, which was very new at that time, mind you. So he was still confident enough to apply. Uh, he joined, he did amazing. Uh, and he joined Walmart. And he had only positive things to say about it. So that was a really good sign to me as well. Uh, so these are the primary reasons. And the third is obviously we are people from across several co countries. And that's something which I really like the diversity of it. Uh, me being a first time uh, student heading abroad for a degree. And I wanted that enriching experience, even though it's, it was gonna be only one year. So 
uh, I guess everything worked out in my favor and uh, all three of those uh, criteria were met. Thank you, Girish. Uh, maybe Suzanne and then Alison. Thanks, Jada. Um, thanks for having me and it's great to be here. Um, I, to introduce myself, I am originally from Romania. I did my undergrad in England at University College London, where I studied computer science and business. Um, I then started my career as a software developer. So I worked for about four years before joining the program. Um, and I discovered data science as I was working. So my team in particular had some machine learning products and that really interested me. So I started taking classes um, and that's how I decided that I wanna pursue a career as a data scientist. Um, so this is the first reason why I applied to the program because I wanted a formal education to shift from doing development to doing data science. Um, and of course, this program is one of the best in the world, if not like the best in the world. So that was the first point that attracted me here. Then second, I think what really differentiates this program is the resources and the amount of attention that you get from faculty and from people like Giada and we have a career coach. Um, so I think that's really special and we have career resources just for us. So I knew that if I joined this program it's gonna be very easy for me to find employment uh, because of all the resources that we get. Um, and then finally, similar to Girish, I wanted this international experience. Um, I wanted to be surrounded by a group that's very close um, to make friends and to you know have a, a really like a true student experience. And I think this program really gives that to you. So that's that's why I applied. Hi everyone, um, and thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to be here and see some of the uh, fellow alumni here as well. Um, so my name is Allie and um, I am originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, my background is in uh, civil and structural engineering. So my undergrad was at Johns Hopkins in structural en or in civil engineering. Um, and I also got my first master's degree in structural engineering from Stanford. And um, similar to Susanna, I had um, a number of years of work experience prior to coming to this program. So I had um, about two years as an engineer, and then I moved into the business analytics space and worked in that space for about three years before coming to this program. And um, I'm, I'm sort of reiterating what uh, others have said in terms of what drew me to this program, but I think uh, a few main things. Uh, first was the length of the program. So having worked for five years, um, I was really excited about being able to take the knowledge that I could gain and put that into use right away. So I liked the fact that it was a one-year program. Um, and then aside from that, uh, I really wanted to, as I was learning about business analytics on my own, uh, I really wanted to come back for a more formal and a more technical education so that I could have the background necessary to tackle some more advanced problems in the analytics space. Um, and then aside from that, I also knew that this program would give me the ability to perhaps learn more about the research being conducted in different areas, especially in the healthcare space, which was something I was really interested in. Um, so research was another factor that uh, led me to, to want to apply to this program as well. Thank you so much. Um, I see that you are posting hundreds of questions in the chat. Please, please keep doing so. Uh, we will try to answer to as many as we can. Um, one of the questions that just came up is, um, what was your typical day when you were a student during the Master of Business Analytics program? For example, how many hours um, of, uh, in class you had? How many um, studying hours at home, networking events? So can you please give us uh, an idea of uh, how it was to be a student for our program? I know it, I, I hope it's not too hard to remember since you graduated in August, but maybe the, there's a difference between the first semester, which I can just say it's very intensive and it's uh, uh, the core of uh, uh, the education because there will be, you will be studying for um, our six core classes. So it's very busy and very intense. And then the spring semester in which uh, the students will focus more on the capstone projects. But I think uh, um, our alumni can describe how was their day while we were uh, part of the program. 
Sure. I can I can start us off um, and maybe others can help explain. Um, but just like Jada said, uh, I would say that there's definitely a difference between the first semester and second semester. So I guess I'll, I'll touch on the first semester. Um, a lot of us spent most of our hours uh, in the operations research center at MIT. Um, so I would say that a number of us would would get up early and um, and go to the operations research center a few hours before class just to be able to get some additional work in. And then, um, as Jada mentioned, we have six core classes in the fall semester. So um, most days are, are pretty busy with with classwork. Um, and going from class to class, I would say it's it's a pretty full day from maybe early morning to uh, mid afternoon. Um, and then at least in my case, when I was finished with classes, I would go back to the operations research center um, and start working on problem sets. Um, a lot of the courses have uh, weekly problem sets. And one of the great things is that, um, you know, there was always a group of students in the in the operations research center that were working together to sort of work through the problems and try to understand um, some of the more complex issues together before sort of uh, tackling tackling the write up on their own. Um, so I, I would say that that was a big focus for the, the first semester, if, if maybe somebody wants to talk a little bit about the second. So yeah, the, the fall semester was definitely the busiest. And then the spring semester, um, it's a little more on you as to how busy it will be, uh, because you get to choose your own electives. Uh, so really, depending on what you want to do, you can do really technical courses, or I think there are some people who take more of the business courses, which are not as technical. Um, I, I sort of took an approach of doing a little bit of both, so trying to balance out that I would have a little bit of technical courses, but then balance it out with some more uh, business courses, which are a little bit easier, a little bit, uh, you know, have a lighter load. Uh, and I think that's probably what most people did in the program. And, and in that sense, I think the spring semester is a little lighter, but of course, then you start applying to jobs. So that sort of comes in as another, uh, you know, so something that you have to do. It's almost like having an extra class uh, <laughs> applying to jobs. So I would say that uh, it's it's not bad that the spring semester is a little bit lighter in terms of the coursework. And, and then of course, in the spring, you also start your capstone project. And that's in, in the spring, it's about 10 hours a week um, for your capstone project. And then in the summer, it transitions to sort of a full-time uh, internship. Um, so it's, it's 40 hours a week. Uh, for us, we were working remotely um, because of the COVID situation. So we had, I think, a little bit more flexibility in terms of making our, on our own hours, which I, I really appreciated. So some weeks it would be busier, some weeks it would be maybe just like 30 hours. Um, but eventually, you know, we would do about 40 hours of work every week over the summer. Um, I'd like to chime in too. Uh, these are all wonderful points. Uh, just to uh, pick it up from where Ali left it off. I would take what she said with a pinch of salt because uh, she was superhuman and she had more than 24 hours in a day, I think, because she was always at the ORC and all of the other people here can watch for me. But if you want to have a more relaxed, I mean, it's only as relaxed as it, it can get in the fall. But if you want it slightly more relaxed, I'd say just take the coursework and don't try to get into research or, or even electives. Though there were people who did all three and like I said, they probably have more than 24 hours in their days. But you could definitely take my route, uh, which was try to do the bad minimum in the fall and try to stick it through. Because being international students, there's some amount of acclimatization that uh, gets in the way too. So you might want to account for that. And secondly, I really love the, this might be a bit of a oddly specific thing that I liked about the MBAT program, but I'll say it anyway. Uh, the thing is, you don't have to wake up really early in the fall because they've really structured the courses in such a way that they start at like 10 or 11. So for somebody like me who's a night owl and prefers working through the night uh, and grinding on these assignments when I find the motivation, it was really helpful that I can get in an extra hour or two of sleep before I uh, got to classes. Obviously, if you choose some electives, they might start out early in the day, but uh, fear not that you can make it work based on your preferences. I, I really love the fact that they worked around that. Thank you, Girish. Maybe Susanna, I can, you can just start to answer the new questions because we have so many questions and I would like to cover as much as possible. I know that whomever, all the students that are following us from all over the world, uh, they just want to know everything about the program. So Susanna, um, are there any courses that you would recommend applicants to take before the program to better prepare them 
any suggestions that also the other panelists have for the students that now wants to apply, but then they will have the summer in which maybe they can prepare something to, you know, start the program um, at their best? Sure, um, I think that's a great question. And I think this is something that you can do if maybe your background isn't fully, um, let's say exactly what the program asks for. So I actually saw a uh, question in the chat about what if we come from a business background. So I just wanna say that this program is a technical program. So you wanna be technically prepared, not just to get in the program, but also to get through the program. So the, the requirements are there to make sure that you can cope with um, like it's very technical on the mathematics side and then you need some computer programming skills. So the reason why admissions is asking for this is to make sure that you can get through. Um, because it's despite the name of business analytics, my opinion is that this is a data science program. Um, okay, so what I did before I joined, I first of all, I took the analytics edge class that is offered on edX. I cannot recommend that highly enough. Uh, we have a much more technical version of edge as part of the program itself, but I can totally recommend doing uh, edge on edX. It's free or you can pay for a certificate, but just do the free version. Um, it's it's a, just a great introduction. And then I would say, if you're looking for um, mathematics, I would say take some calculus class if you don't have that. Um, I could recommend uh, on Coursera, there is a mathematics for machine learning uh, from Imperial. So I would, I would go for that. Um, and then some general data science class. Um, there are many like courses that are called like the data science path or the data science track. Um, have some knowledge. Um, I personally came from a computer science background, so I didn't need additional training in programming. But if you don't have that, um, you should definitely take some coding class in Python or R. Um, so this is my um, opinion. And also just the summer before the program, you know, take classes, prepare, but also remember to relax because it's an intense program. So um, yeah, if you get the summer off, definitely take some time for yourself. Yep, great advice. So I'll, I'll just follow that up too. I think anything to add, Alex? Oh, um, so I think Susanna covered a lot of really great points. Um, just to share like from another perspective, I, I came in with um, sort of a different background because I, I was more on the engineering side of things. And so uh, I actually didn't really have uh, some of the pre, I didn't take any courses the summer before, like Susanna had mentioned. Um, so a lot of things were new to me when I came in. Optimization was completely new. Um, and actually a lot of machine learning, except for some of the simplest algorithms were completely, completely new to me as well. Um, so I, I'll just say that even if you don't have the opportunity to take um, you know, a class or if you only have the opportunity to take maybe one class, that's okay. Um, with the support of your classmates, you, you will get through it. I can uh, vouch for that for sure. Um, so, and, and after about a month or so, you'll feel pretty caught up to speed, I think um, in terms of all of the technical requirements. Um, uh, if I had to go back in time and I were to take maybe one class, I might actually uh, brush up on linear algebra, to be honest but that's just another piece of advice. <laughs> yeah, in addition to the classes, I think if you can do a project, that would be really great. So I think if you can sort of do something hands-on where you get to apply maybe some of the coding things. Like I never really took a coding class, to be honest, like in my undergraduate. Uh, well, I took some classes that were you know, more coding focused, but they were more like project-based classes. So it wasn't the focus wasn't really you know, learning the programming language, more like how do I apply the coding language to do something. So if you can do something like that, I think that would be great, and that sort of shows an initiative that you're interested in the in data science as well. Um, so I think sort of having that applied scale would be really important, and that will come in helpful uh, in the MIT program because we we do have lots of projects uh, in the fall semester as well. Um, and, and I think if you have sort of hands-on skills there, that's that's definitely helpful. Thank you. Um, this is a very interesting question. Um, what kind of resources students usually underutilize that they should be aware of? Um, are there new opportunities, organizations, activities around campus that you wish you knew and 
before and uh, you regret maybe that you haven't joined or done while you were a student? Hey, sorry, Jada, could you repeat that question? Uh, like I said, I'm not a morning sure. person and it's seven out here in the West Coast. So I might have zoned out. <laughs> of course, of course. What kind of resources students usually underutilize that they should be aware of? Uh, I could maybe take that. Um, so the first thing is I feel, uh, I mean, I obviously did benefit uh, from the help of my classmates a lot, but even if you are in, used to studying in a group like I am, because I was used to studying individually throughout my undergraduate uh, program, which was like five years. I'd still recommend like going right from the beginning. That's something I didn't do. You not only like gain a lot from those discussions, but you make friends really quickly, which is very important if you want to get through the program, especially during a pandemic. I can't stress that enough. So uh, really make sure you get into at least one or two study groups informally. I mean, if you're really confident of being able to do it alone, that works. But I highly suggest utilizing that more, especially if you come from a, a solo studying uh, sort of uh, background like I have. So that's definitely one resource I would recommend you to take advantage of. I'll also um, just say that in addition to that, I think that um, one of the greatest parts of this program is that it is small and close knit and you have the opportunity to really get to know your professors and to take advantage of their, um, their time that they're willing to give to you. We, we really have you know, professors that uh, make sure that they, they make a lot of time for their students in terms of office hours. And even if they, you know, if you can't come to their office hours at, at that specific time, if you just uh, reach out to them via email, um, they're more than willing to set up time to speak with you. Um, and I think that's something that is very much worth taking advantage of. Um, and it's a great way to, to get to know your professors one-on-one uh, -on -one and sort of even learn more about what, what they do in terms of research and just talk to them about um, what, what types of things they're working on because they're all working on really exciting projects. Thank you. And maybe on this note, we can talk about research assistantships, which are a possibility while you are um, in our program, uh, both in the um, fall semester and in the spring semester, students um, are invited to apply to research assistantships with our faculty. And uh, we saw that in the past years, the majority of the students do. And uh, um, it's a great experience to both uh, grow um, in the research field and understand what does it mean to do a research for a, um, a university. And also it helps because uh, um, the, the students get a tuition refund and they get paid to do research. So it's also a financial aspect that we saw it's something that uh, students consider. Um, I remember uh, that some of you did the research. Do you wanna say a few words with which professor you uh, worked and uh, what was the topic of your research? If it was an useful experience, uh, if you recommend it, um, and if it's doable, especially, because I think um, our students from home are wondering how heavy it is the workload and if it's possible to do a research assistantship successfully. Um, I guess it's, it's my turn to take a question, so I'll take that one. I did a research assistantship with Professor Letsev, uh, Retsev Levy. Um, we worked on primarily healthcare research, um, and we also partnered with different companies like healthcare providers uh, using their data and conducting research on the back of that. So it was definitely a great experience in terms of just having data science experience as a whole. Um, my personal workload wasn't too bad. I think it was less than 10 hours a week. Um, that's not always the case and maybe other people can speak, um, but, it, but definitely even some additional hours is a lot of hours when you have the workload that we have. Um, and you know, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but it definitely is an intense program. And this is something that you should know coming in. Um, so I would recommend, particularly if you don't have work experience, then maybe a research assistantship is a good way to put data science experience on your CV. If you're looking to do a PhD or you're academically inclined, research assistantship is a great way to go into like publishing or 
further into PhDs. So particularly if you want to do a PhD, totally do an RA. Um, other than that, um, you know, you, you should consider your own circumstance and how much uh, work you're willing to take. I know at least a, two people that only started in the spring with the RA, so they kept their fall semester, which is like the intense one, without an additional RA. I can speak to um, my research experience as well. Um, so I worked with uh, Professor Dimitri Bertsimus um, throughout the year. So I started in the fall and continued in the spring um, and actually in the summer as well. So I had the opportunity to do research the whole time um, during, my, during the program. Um, and I was also working like Susanna uh, mentioned in the healthcare space. So. Um, for me, it was really interesting to be able to um, sort of think about an industry that I hadn't thought about before, just one that I, you know, I had read about and read about different, um, different machine learning applications in that industry, so I really wanted to learn more. Um, I actually got to work on personalized treatments for um, hypertensive patients, which was really exciting and something I knew nothing about before coming into the program. Um, so I'll say that as well. If you have an interest, in, even if it's in an, in an industry that you're not familiar with, that's totally fine, um, uh, and it's it's just a great way to uh, to learn more about how to apply what you're learning in the classroom to real world problems. Um, that was one of the things that I loved most about my research experience. Thank you, Allison and um, Susanna. Um, a burning question that I see um, on the chat here is about the capstone project. Can you please tell the students that are following from home uh, for which uh, uh, capstone uh, um, companies you worked? How was your experience and what did you learn from the capstone project? What are the main things that you learned that are valuable? I was looking. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, please. I just answered one. I just didn't hear if she said Susanna or someone else. Yeah, so I was working for uh, Schlumberger for my capstone project. Um, and I think my project was more on the technical side. So when you, the way the capstone project works is that in the spring semester, uh, it's sort of like a two uh, sided system where you interview with the capstone companies and they interview you, and then you both rank each other. And then based on those rankings, it's, it, it gets decided with which team, uh, so there are teams of two uh, MN students, um, which team works with which capstone company. Um, so we, I was working with uh, another MBAN student, uh, Luke, and we were both interested in doing something technical, uh, just to advance sort of that side of the of the learning experience. And uh, we, we were matched with Schlumberger, so we're working on a more technical project, a more research focused project. And I think it was a great way of of learning how to apply uh, the skills that we learn in in class in a real life setting. So really understanding, you know, how do you communicate sort of the technical aspects of a project with non technical people. Um, and and how, how do you work day to day uh, with different stakeholders in the team? Uh, how do you manage sort of those relationships, uh, you know, with both technical teams and non-technical teams? So I think those were some of the skills that that I would not have learned otherwise. And I think that that was really great for a Capstan project to sort of introduce that those skills to us before we really start working full time after the program ends. Um, I'm not sure what else was part of the question, but <laughs> I hope that sort of answered most of it. Yeah, I'd like to follow up on that too. Uh, excellent points that Andras uh, raised, especially the fact that you learn to communicate technical details at a high level. That's, I think, paramount even if you want to start working in this space. Uh, other things I'd mention is that, uh, uh, so my partner was uh, from Moldova. Uh, for those of you wondering, yes, that's an actual country. And uh, MIT was able to find an excellent candidate there. So that's how diverse this program is. Uh, so anyway, uh, we work for this company called Group M in Denmark. Uh, so this is a media uh, investment company, which is uh, globally renowned. Uh, but we couldn't get to go to uh, Denmark, though, though that was a primary motivator for us to uh, join them uh, because of the pandemic. But even otherwise, we had an outstanding experience. Uh, this So I came in with like not a whole lot of work experience uh, even internship or full-time. 
so this was a really good way for me to get to know what it's like uh having like a a uh, longer term project uh, with actual accountability and deliverables uh, especially if you're a new graduate that's really helpful because that sort of like uh, provides you a launching platform before you start working full time and it also gives you valid experience you can talk about and thirdly if the, nothing else works so you can always go to your uh, capstone company and ask them for a full time role or ask them to put you in touch with uh, other companies so I don't know if this was all related to the question, but these are some worthwhile points keeping in mind about the Capstone project. I guess I can also talk about my Capstone. So I worked with DHL, um, which was supposed to be uh, a project in Brazil, which unfortunately was conducted remote, but you know, maybe you, you guys will all get to go to your company location where you join. Um, I think it was a great experience because unlike many companies, DHL didn't have uh, internal expertise. And so we had the chance to design the project ourselves, implement the project and suggest to the company many things and it was extremely successful um and i'm and we, we got some great results um also our manager uh, our project manager got promoted shortly after the project so that we like we know for sure that they really appreciated the work we did um and and you know it was a great internal success i would say when when choosing the capstone company you should consider whether you're interested in in recruiting for uh, through the capstone or not, um, the location, if that's something that, uh, if it's not remote, um, your partner, which is someone you're going to be working extremely close with for six months, um, like what's the environment? Um, for example, if you don't want to recruit, maybe you want to take a company that is going to be more relaxed, allowing you to do recruiting on the side uh, or allowing you to pursue research or anything else you want to pursue. Um, and of course, your academic advisor, which also plays a huge part in the capstone experience. Ali, maybe do you want to add something about your uh, capstone experience? Sure, sure. Um, so my capstone was actually with Wayfair. Um, if, if you're not familiar, they're um, an online uh, home goods company. So they uh, sell a lot of furniture and, and different home goods. Um, and they are located in Boston. So uh, I actually had the opportunity um, before um, everything happened with, with the pandemic to actually go into their um, office and work there for about three weeks. Um, so as others have mentioned, um, during the spring semester, you spend or dedicate about 10 hours of work per week to your capstone. So my capstone partner and I would go um, to their to their offices on Friday and spend about a half of a, of a half of a day working with them there, uh, which was a, a great experience, although it was uh, uh, not very long lasting, but it was a great opportunity uh, in general just to sort of uh, become a part of the office culture and sort of learn about what the what these companies are doing on a larger scale. Wayfair is a huge company, so um, having the ability to sort of work uh, across different teams, which is something that's very important to Wayfair, was also very interesting uh, because as others have mentioned, you, you learn a lot about uh, discussing sort of technical concepts uh, to non-technical business leaders, which is very important for uh, when you step into the workplace after the, after the program. Um, and that being said, uh, I think one other thing that I'll mention about the Capstone in general is that there are all sorts of projects, um, all sorts of industries. And if you go in with a very open mind and, and you listen to all of the pitches um, from each of the companies, I think you'll find that there are at least four or five projects that you connect with um, and you're very interested in working on. Uh, my partner and I were really interested in this problem in particular because it was a very open-ended question, wasn't a very well-defined problem. And we thought that it would be great to have uh, seven months to really tackle a problem that we didn't know a lot about and just uh, try to dive in deep and, and learn more. Thank you all. I just want to add that uh, um, the program is always open to suggestions. If there is any company or any uh, 
particular sector or industry that they are interested and we are not already partner with this uh, um, specific uh, uh, company, please let us know. The MBN program is always happy to reach out and find partnership in the industry in order to provide um, the widest and most uh, um, rewarding experience to our students. Uh, when you will be working uh, in the capstone project, as our students mentioned, um, you will have the help of a faculty advisor and also a PhD mentor. So the team will be of two students working together, then a PhD student and a faculty advisor. So it's um, literally um, a team effort and it's very rewarding because you will always, there will always be someone to answer your questions, to guide you um, and uh, to help you uh, to succeed in this experience. Um, let me see, we have so many questions. Uh, what kind of support uh, uh, does the um, MIT MBAN provide for recruiting and job searching? Um, we covered this topic during the first uh, um, info session um, that we had, I think, uh, back in uh, at the end of September, but maybe our alumni can describe their experience in the job searching um, and how it was, how did you find, uh, if you find it helpful? For. So I can I can try to take this question because I heavily relied on the MIT support. I would say also we had a very peculiar circumstance because we were graduating in the middle of a pandemic where um, job search was harder than usual. Um, and despite all of this, I think we did a great job at, at landing jobs and uh, some of us ended up with multiple offers, which um, given the fact that for a few months, most companies weren't even interviewing, I say is a great success. Um, I think MIT helped us a lot. Of course, there are events that are organized and I completely recommend things like career fairs, um, but particularly the program support. So the uh, careers office and Tracy, who's your career advisor, is really great um, for things like how to make a CV and like maybe that differs from your home country. Um, so that's interesting to like know how to do um, interview prep so we can do mock sessions and other things like that, um, how to update your LinkedIn profile. Um, so these are sessions that we hold and then we have individual one on one sessions. So I would go to my advisor for pretty much, you know, if I have an interview coming up, I would do a mock session with her. Um, if I have an offer, I would, she would teach me how to like balance or if I have, let's say, you know, someone wants an answer for me, but I'm still interviewing with someone like managing that territory or even negotiating offers, you know, just any kind of help, you have a support there. Um, I think most importantly though, in order to land jobs, what you need to do is talk to people, like applying on the website rarely ever works. And so the network uh, is extremely valuable. The network of us alums, um, other MIT people, like if you just message someone on LinkedIn and say, I'm also from MIT, they are very likely to respond and talk to you. Or you can just ask your career advisor or your faculty, like also your faculty knows a lot of people. So like get, just getting in touch with the right people, especially in a pandemic was probably the most important thing that MIT provided for us. I agree with Susanna. She, she pretty much <laughs> summarized it very well. I think one thing to point out is that the career fair um, that, that's in the in February, I believe, that's organized by, by the class as well. Um, so if you want to take part of that, I think that's a great way of um, maybe starting your exploration of what companies are out there looking for data scientists early. Um, now, again, for us, it was slightly different, right? Because just after our career fair, the pandemic started. So I think a couple of us were in situations where we were having interviews and then, and then you know, our companies went on hold. Uh, but normally I would say that normally that wouldn't happen. So you can take sort of an approach of starting early and maybe trying to find a job in the spring and then you have your summer to relax. Uh, for me, it was more of a longer process this time uh, just because of the pandemic. So I was sort of looking for a job throughout the summer. Uh, but again, the support that you get is really quite outstanding. And I think everyone uh, ended up with, with jobs they really like. So I think that's, that's the most important. Thank you. Um, we can move to another question. Um, how applicable are the skills directly taught in the program in the industry? Um, 
are the students absolutely ready for a role in analytics, in analytics upon graduation or do they need additional work beyond program requirements? Now that you are all in the real world outside working, uh, what is your experience? Alison Girish, maybe, can you tell us what you learned in the program? What are the most useful skills and tools that you are using every day now that you are working? Yep. Um, I think the first and foremost skill for me personally is Python. Uh, even though you don't learn that explicitly in the fall semester, maybe if you take a course or you do an RA shift, which requires the use of Python. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, if you're somebody like me who came in with no experience in Python, I'd highly recommend taking electives in the spring semester, which uh, use Python and rely heavily on Python. One such example is applied machine learning. Uh, it's a really good starting point because it builds up right from the very first step, which is, uh, you know, using lists and arrays in Python all the way to like being able to uh, build classes for neural networks and understanding how machine learning models uh, are even deployed at scale in a, in a very basic way, uh, mind you. It's just not like you're going to be building out web apps and stuff. So, but it definitely prepares you uh, with the skills uh to be able to work on Python effectively, which I feel in my opinion is something most companies are looking for. And I'd highly encourage you to like uh, pick that up. Uh, so I think that's the most important uh, suggestion from me. I'm, I'm sure the others have a bunch of good answers too. I will second what Garish just mentioned about uh, Python. Um, so like in, in my experience uh, in, in the first few months here, I've almost exclusively being uh, been using Python, even though in the program we use uh, sort of a mix of Python and R, but when you're working on models that are going to be um, put into production, I think that Python is the language of choice. Um, so I'd recommend becoming familiar with that and being comfortable with that. Um, another thing that I'll mention is that the program, this program in particular, puts a lot of focus on optimization. And um, I will say that I have already used optimization in my, <laughs> in my working experience. I um, did a linear program this past week, so it definitely comes in handy. Uh, even though it's, it's not something that a lot of other programs may touch on, it, uh, it does come in handy in the real world. There are a lot of many use cases. Okay, thank you. Um, what do you know now that you wish you knew before you started the MBAN program? I think it's important to know that like, if you get into the program, you're, I think you're set for success. Like you don't have to worry too much. <laughs> uh, like, I think a lot of us stress a lot during the fall semester because the workload is a lot, uh, but you really have a good group of people around you that uh, you can rely on for help. And I think that's very important to know. And like, so no one really gets left behind. <laughs> so uh, I think sometimes you feel like you're, um, I don't know, you feel like everyone's really smarter than you and, and you're sort of uh, maybe catching on slower than others, but that's not necessarily true. Um, and I think um, everyone will get the support that they need. So for example, like we had um, the machine learning under modern optimization lens class that was fairly, um, difficult, I would say. And then the program sort of set up help, additional help with the TAs that we can go to with questions. So the, the program is, is, you know, always looking to help you. Uh, and I think that's, that's really great to know. Um, so I would say not stressing as much <laughs> uh, is like important. It also will make your life easier and maybe make your work better as well. So I, I think that's something to, uh, to note. Um, I can follow up on that too, unless Susanna has something to uh, pitch in with. Okay, cool. Uh, it, it draws on what Andra said about getting stressed in the fall semester. Uh, my stressing began before the fall semester. Uh, I was thinking I had to do as much as possible to put myself in a position of success, uh, which entails taking an elective in the fall and also doing an RA. Finally, I ended up doing none of that, uh, which, which was the most, uh, you know, uh, reasonable approach from my perspective, because uh, 
I found the fall workload itself heavy and uh, quite rewarding too in terms of what you get. And the program directors did an amazing job right at the beginning telling us that that would be enough and you don't have to stress about doing a whole lot of things. But just like any other new uh, freshie that comes into the program, I didn't trust them entirely. And I got to know that it was entirely true after I finished the fall semester and I uh, progressed to the spring and then got employed. So you will get a lot out of it just doing the path minimum. So you don't have to stress about having to do everything and looking at your peers and uh, you know being stressed out that you're not doing as much or whatever. Uh, you are going to meet a bunch of brilliant people, but if you're in the program, that means you're set up for success, just like Andra said. So don't worry about having to do too much. Alice and Susanna, do you have any final um, suggestions for the students uh, before they submit their application? I think, um, you know, I think just everything that's been said before, you know, I didn't realize the amount of skills that are really needed and that are, you know, collapsed into this one year. The fact that it's one year, um, means that it, you, you get like basically everything you need to become a data scientist. And I also see this in the questions a lot, like this is a business analytics program. Um, what's the difference between a data science program? You know, I'll say that this is a data science program. Um, and it is this the teach the, the skills that they teach and the fact that, um, you know, you do get that business exposure and like definitely because we're part of Salon, we have a lot of, um, like opportunity to talk to companies and develop our business and communication skills. So I wouldn't say that we're lacking in the business component, not at all, but I will say that we are extremely technical and maybe this is something that I didn't know going in or like the other programs that I applied were more business analytics in the sense that you would end up being a data analyst and maybe you would touch upon some code or do some basic algorithms, but you wouldn't go into like the mathematical principles behind algorithms, which is what we do. So I think this is something that, you know, maybe I, I didn't know. Um, I'm extremely glad that this is the case because um, we get to do like very cool work. Um, and yeah, and we get a lot of exposure as well. So. Um, I guess my one one piece of advice, I have two pieces of advice, one for application and one for uh, once you're in the program. Um, in terms of your application, um, I think, you know, it's really important to think about like what really excites you about this industry, um, what you find fascinating and what you hope to get out of the program and, and to think about those things as you're trying to prepare your application. Um, that was one of the things that I was really thinking through. Um, it's a big decision when you're when you're applying to this type of program and um, you'll be putting a lot of effort in. And so just understanding like exactly what you want to get out of it before you go in, I think is is really useful. Um, and then a piece of advice for being in the program is every once in a while, um, sort of take a step back and and try not to um, not to stress out uh, as much. I think if I could go back in time, I would try to stress less. I was really stressed uh, as I think everyone knows and is smiling right now um, first semester and everybody everybody's going to get through it. You're, you're here for a reason. Um, you have the full support of everyone in the program. Um, so should try to remember that, um, especially if you're having a hard day or a hard week, um, is that everybody is here to support you and um, just be you know excited and thankful for all the amazing things that you're gonna learn as a part of it. Thank you to our ambassadors. Thank you so much for your time, uh, for all the answers. Thank you for everybody who followed us from home. Uh, we are honored of, uh, to receive so many questions and we hope we answer the majority of them. Thank you to the admission office for hosting um, this uh, uh, final info session. Um, we are very grateful for your interest and we hope to see many applications. Um, my colleague Jennifer um, just posted here. This uh, is our website. And uh, um, if you have more questions, please feel free to send us uh, um, an email. Thank you again, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you. Thank Good you. luck, people. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.